can go. Don't be alone. <coughs> Here we go, people. Come on in and say hello. Tuesday afternoon in hot, hot, fiery Perth. So let's say hello and see how you're going and see what we have for you today. Oh, hello. Oh, my goodness, you're quick. Hi, Madeline. How are you? Hi, Kish, Marie. Hi, Andrea. Sarah Joyce, evening and blessings to you too. Thank you very much. Rebecca, Samantha Love, good to see you all and everyone else that's uh, peeking in around the corner there. Thank you for being here. Um, Madeline, oh goodness me, look at you. Andrea, Hayley Marie, hello. Annette, hi everyone. <clears throat> Before we get underway today, because I never know what, uh, what we're going to do. It's always a lovely surprise. Madeline, I am, darling, I am. Narelle, hello. Uh, Pamela, could you all um, let me know? Kat, hello. Uh, let me know, like, where you're coming in from. I mean, I've met some of you before. Well, I've met you by name. Um, but let me know where you're coming in from, please, so I can see where we are in the world, what's, what's going on. What... I want to say today is that if you happen to be joining me from either my Gwenda Smith page, which is my spiritual page, or my Heal with Gwenda page, I can't actually see your comments until I finish. So if you are joining me from those um, pages, please do put your comments up. Please do ask your questions um, because I will go back now that I know. I'll go back and have a look. Oh, look at you all, all from over the, all over the place. Was that uh, Kuta Mundra? Oh, that's a ripper name, isn't it, Alicia? Melbourne, South Oz, Sunshine Coast, Queensland, Ben Oh, Ben Cat, really? Mm, I don't know if you've heard the news. Hi from New Zealand. Hi, D Stella. I don't know if you've heard the news from over here, but um, a lot of our People around the Perth area are devastating fires and have lost their homes. We've lost lots of our flora and fauna. Absolutely terrible. But that brings me to something that, um, hi from Tassie, Linda, something that I do want to talk about today. A lot of you will have um, been on pages because, you know, you're here in a, in a spiritual community. So you will have been... Um, Oh, thanks, Lee. Good to have you back again. And Mullumbimby, I love Mullumbimby. I'd move to Mullumbimby in a heartbeat, Lee. Um, with, um, with things that are going on over here, so those of you who are from Melbourne, oh, hello, Christy. Yep, Perth. Same, same, love. Those of you who are from Melbourne um, will have experienced... A lot of this uh, recently during your big lockdown. Um, thank you, Madeline. Justine, hello. Yeah, thanks, Kat. It's it's awful for them, and um, it's still going on. But you know, it's really sad today. Is that I've seen, or in the last twenty four hours, I've seen the ugliness of mankind, humans, people. There is a difference. Um, raise its horrible head. You know, they've been ordered to wear masks and some people simply can't wear them and it's nobody's business if they can't wear them. But the horrible side of uh, human beings have um, come out during this time and you know what that does? It lowers the vibration. It shifts all energy for everyone um, and people have been diabolically revolting you know it's it's one thing to say you're spiritual and actually be spiritual you see a truly spiritual person lives from a place of complete faith trust and belief and 
you don't have that in the heart of someone who is attacking other people. You don't have a truly spiritual soul when they are being vitriolic and revolting to other people. Hi Shazza Roland. Yeah, horrible when you guys had fires there too. Fire is, uh, you know, if you talk to a, a shaman, they'll say, oh, it's very cleansing. Well, it's also extremely devastating. So it's very interesting that at this time, when people are not being compassionate, tolerant, kind, supportive, loving, caring, that we are faced with devastating fires. It doesn't surprise me. You know, this is a way that people are pulled back into line to be compassionate, be kind, be tolerant. It's a shame that such a lot of people are so easily led by um, rules, laws, etc. And then there are others who are awake. Well, there will always be that difference, right? But we do not become divisive. As soon as we become divisive, we become divisive, we lose our preciousness of being the wonderful creations of the creator that we are. And therein we bring trouble. So wherever you are in the world, always remember to hold yourself. Yes, Andrea, sadly they are. Hi, David, greetings. Ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> Love back to you. Wherever you are in the world and whatever you're doing, always hold yourself, no matter what's around you. Always hold yourself in a place of compassion, kindness, love. You know, we're not perfect. We can't be perfect. We're not here to be perfect. But my God, we can most certainly be compassionate, caring, kind to our fellow man. And we can be supportive. It's dreadful to see the change in people slash humans. Yes, there is a difference. During all of this time of what's been going on in the world since last year and is continuing. So being kind, being courageously kind and compassionate is where you're going to take your life to a better level and it's where you're going to take your life to the place where you want it to be no matter what's going on around you. So a little reminder, people that are on my uh, spiritual page, Gwenda Smith, and people who are on my Heal with Gwenda page, please do write your comments. Please do say your hellos. I will come back to you and look for your comments when we finish because I can't see them from this page. It's just the way that um, it works. But I will go back and um, see you. David, I love that. Love and affinity. Absolutely. The thing about destructive, what appear to be natural disasters, there's nothing natural about them. Um, mankind is the creator of his own mess and destruction. I've had the privilege of meeting a team that call themselves the Angels of Destruction. They actually turned up in my reading room one day um, when I was about to read for someone and I said, whoa, they had a whole different energy. And no, they are not of the dark. Could not get into my house being of the dark. Whole different energy. And I said, who are you? And they introduced themselves in tandem as being the angels of destruction. And I said, but angels are not destructive. And they said, oh, but we are. And we are at a time when mankind, people, need a reminder to look out for each other, need a reminder to look after Mother Earth. So, you know, I've met them and I therefore have a different take on what people call a natural disaster. And usually it's because of something that mankind has been making a mess with or the way that he's treating each other. So always think about that when you're doing anything in your life. And also remember, energy begets energy. So whatever your thoughts are, whatever you're projecting out there is caught up in the collective and it's returned. You know, there was a time where 
my dad used to say every dog has its day and that equates to karma so that equates to when we wish that someone didn't get away with the things they get away with well there was a time where we'd have to wait lifetimes to see that it's not like that anymore we can see karma delivered in an instant so be careful with what you think be careful with what you send out there onto the web because my goodness me it gets caught it gets surfed back super fast these days um it's yes yeah calamity is divine providence true david true so wherever you're at and whatever you're doing in your life hold yourself in a beautiful space of love and i know sometimes that's really hard but you know always go back to your own heart go to the love within you go to the people around you that bring you a lot of love that you can share love with that in itself lifts and shifts crappy vibration it lifts and shifts the darkness of fear and this is where people are coming from the who are misbehaving this is where people are creating divisiveness and creating anger and disturbance they are coming from fear and their own ignorance of their own um, personal want to survive so they will survive at any cost to anyone else yeah that's right so you know this works all around the place so anything any time that you want to change something in your life love is is the place to go and speaking of that I want to share something really special with you today some of you may be on my page and might have seen my post the other day on Saturday I traveled to the country uh, a country part outside of Perth <laughs> yes Wendy it does and your Lang Lang I do love your Lang Lang Shaza um, I was called upon to go to a hospital in a country town to help a lady to pass over she felt that it was um, her time to go yes Sarah Bellamy and the fear is out of pure ignorance lack of belief faith and trust anyone that lives a truly spiritual life anyone the hi Angela um, yeah, that's right David anyone who lives a truly spiritual life does not hold fear in their heart nor do they belong um, nor do they behave from a, uh, a place of fear lots of false spiritualness around these days so back to my trip south my sister is a brilliant healer also a natural healer uh, as like myself and she works differently to me and this beautiful lady uh, has been to my sister over years and she asked her she said um, I want to go I want to leave will you help me pass and my sister's answer was well let me check my credentials um, no that's not me that's not in my in my gig and the lady said well do you know do you know who would be and my sister said yes Gwenda um, does Gwenda does that work thanks very much sister so the lady said would you call her so I went down to meet her and she began her journey uh, several years ago several years with breast cancer she got through the breast cancer it went away but then it came back and it came back through her hips went through her spine went up into her brain and she's had one heck of a journey you know with it and she's done lots of really good things to heal herself she's done lots of uh, the right way to eat and all that sort of thing she's done affirmations and everything that's not enough to heal people it is not enough it begins your journey but if you really want to heal and use the infinite power of yourself and the innate wisdom that you have to be able to heal you need more than a few affirmations and eating right, right? you need much more than that and the big one is faith and belief simple <laughs> simple but not that easy hey so I turned up to the hospital to see her and um, went through the ceremony for her but as soon as I uh, was close to her 
I could sense that she was not ready to go. This was not her time to be leaving. So I went through the motions of clearing and healing where all the disturbance was. And you know, it was amazing because all the disturbance and the imbalance was actually in her 12 levels of energy bodies and beyond. So I did some soul fragmentation work and cleansed her whole, um, her whole being, a whole energetic being for her and then worked through the actual physical body. Now when I finished and my sister was in tandem with me, she does things her way, but I was doing the heavy duty work if you like. When I finished and we were talking to her and, and her husband stayed too, he was blown away, he said he'd never seen anything like it before. Um, and the lady herself, I said to my sister, look at her eyes. Now my sister knows this lady and knows what she's been like and how she's been. Thank you, Sarah, it's my life's work and I like to share. Um, what it is that I do with you to also build your faith, belief and trust in things you can't see, things you can't fathom, things you can't understand because it's far greater than you as you know yourself. So we looked at her eyes and my sister started to cry and the lady said, I feel amazing. I feel amazing. Oh, I'm not ready to die. And I smiled and said, no, you're not. And heaven doesn't want you. It's not your time. Quite often when I go to do this work, um, I will take along the respective angel or they join me and let me know who is there. And this time I knew that Archangel Raziel was not there. But as soon as I touched her, I knew that she was not going to... Um, be going anywhere and she said with these beautiful sparky eyes that she didn't have before the before the session that note she wasn't ready to go anywhere so then <laughs> thanks David um, then that was Saturday Sunday night I received a message from my sister to say I've just had a phone call from Deb and she says the doctor came to see her on Sunday and he said I don't know what you're doing what's changed but just keep doing it he said I'm confused so the doctor was actually expecting that she'd be on her deathbed when he went to see her on Sunday and she was far from that and the doctor himself said I'm confused <laughs> then her family came to see her and they all came in upset um, because they'd all had the call to say she was going. So they all came in to see her expecting, you know, they were very up upset and expecting to see her on her way out. And apparently they all came to the door and just crashed into each other and said, whoa, what have you done? You look so different. And she said, I feel so different. And they go, we're confused. <laughs> so the doctor and the family were confused because she looked amazing she feels amazing and she doesn't want to go anywhere yet and she's not going anywhere yet so when I looked into her um, I found that her bowel kept getting twisted and it was causing a lot of problems for her in her abdomen we worked on the bowel got it back to how it's meant to be and then went across to her liver and did work in her liver. Then when I went to her lungs, I found that there was a lot of um, fluid that was actually caught down deep in her lungs. So we worked on that. And then I follow and go where I'm guided. I took hold of her right ankle and she said, oh, that's my really painful ankle. I don't know. And she trailed off in her voice. When I finished, I explained to her what I'd found and I also explained everything that I'd found that was trapped in all of her energy fields and that I'd now cleared them. And this is what opens 
paves the way for her to heal. So she was like, wow, and I feel so good. But then when I explained about the bowel, she said, oh, that makes so much sense. They kept telling me that I've got a big blockage in my bowel. And she said, no, I just thought, no, I haven't. There's something wrong there, but it's not a blockage. And I said, that's right, it's not, but it's fixed now. And then I said, that ankle, that is a leading part of your lymph glands and the kidney meridian line. Now I've released that. So you're going to find that you're not going to be all puffed up. Now remember, I'd never met this lady before. You're not going to be all puffed up and have all this extra fluid. And her husband said, oh, I can't believe this. They drain off like four litres of fluid off her just about every day. So where I touched her on her ankle and her lower calf, and she just about went through the roof saying, that's my really painful, and then she went off into slumberland. And she said afterwards, my ankle's not painful anymore. So, you know, this is the work that I do, and I like to share it with you um, because you may know someone that is in a predicament. Thank you all very much. That I really appreciate your... Um, your comments and your engagement. It, it's lovely to sit with you. Even though I can't see you, I can feel you. And I, I love being able to see your engagement. Thank you. So you may know someone or you yourself may go on a journey of being very unwell or have some kind of awful imbalance that is really just caving your life. Now, the thing about this is that if that imbalance is caught in your energy bodies, your physical self is not able to heal. So remember at the beginning I was saying that she was a very positive lady. She did affirmations. She ate the right things. She juiced. She did all sorts of things. Oh, a, Wendy, a twisted bowel is extremely painful. Um, <laughs> thanks, Maria. So... She did all those things, but she had not seen to and did not realise that she was actually holding on to events and things that had taken place in her life and they'd been moved out to her different energy bodies, different areas of her soul, plus her soul had been fragmented. You see, the part I didn't tell you was that before her breast cancer began, her husband, they had, uh, they have, sorry, they have three boys. Her husband went out to the bush to get wood. She just carried on doing what she does. And then it was really late and he wasn't home. So thank you, Justine. So she sent her boys looking for him and they all knew where he generally went for, um, for getting wood so he's out there with a chainsaw and the trailer victoria you're sick of that 13 years girlfriend what are you doing so the boys went out there and they found their dad but they found him deceased while he was sawing wood chopping wood down he had a heart attack and he died at the scene so when she didn't know Thank you, Victoria. When she didn't know where he was and she sent her boys, she had no clue that that was going to be the news that they would bring back. So she lost her husband very suddenly and some of you may also have been through a sudden grief and a sudden shock. This is what creates fragmentation of the soul on a lot of occasions, especially when it's heart-related. And to, to her, he was her everything. And to her, they were going to be together forever. So there began her journey with um, breast cancer. And so it's gone on. So you see, in her energy fields was that shock, was that grief, was that trauma. And because she had boys and a family, she did what many women do. And she made them her focus. She had to be strong for them. She had to get through this for them because they lost their dad but without realizing that has all been pushed out into the energy fields and fragmented 
some soul. Uh, Lee, do I do healings for people with emotional belief blocks, etc., when you don't necessarily have the physical? Yes, Lee, absolutely. I can see into you. I can see what blocks are there and what they're about. But, you know, the really interesting thing is that if it is something that you're not ready to face, I will say to you, something took place at this time in your life will find an age, a timeline, and you will say, no, 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 life, no, it's gone through a bit of change, but life was good there. You see, the thing about healing is you've got to be ready to heal whatever the issue is, right? And don't believe anyone that says you can do ABC and poof, a little click your fingers and your healing's done. It doesn't work like that. You can go and have as many sound healings and buzz yourself with, you know, light and candles and all the rest of it. You will not heal just from having that done. You see, you've played a part in whatever that pain is. <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. Or oh, is that, oh no, it's to Victoria. Okay, sorry, Wendy. Um, so whatever the pain is that you've created in your physical self is because there is a, um, a disturbance that you're not able to face. And as I said at the beginning, you know, we're not here to be perfect. We're here for the experience. But man, oh man, we lose our way and we get lost in the experience. And some people even become the experience, which is why they have chronic fatigue, IBS, um, Crohn's, uh, what's the other one? muscular dystrophy um, you know the list goes on and on and on so having a look into you being able to find what it is that you're holding in there is where I can begin to heal you but the secret is you've got to want to be healed you've got to want to be free of whatever that baggage is that you're carrying around with yourself you know uh, some of you know my story of when, uh, it's just hard. let me say sometimes finding the issue is hard but really relieving if you can. Yes, that's right. Um, Kim, when we bury stuff so deep or push it out there into our energy bodies, it, it can be difficult to find the issue. And for me, as the seer, being able to see into like an x-ray machine, an MRI machine can, I can see what's caused it. But if you're not ready to hear that, you're not going to receive it so that you can release it. Does this make sense to you all? It's like coming, um, well, actually, a lady from South Australia I was working with, she'd had so many operations, my goodness me, on her ankle. Um, she'd had an accident and she'd had a, um, a stingray bite and, you know, this one ankle just kept copying it and nothing was working for her. And I'd met her at a conference. So... Yeah, I like your words, Jen, what you're stubbornly holding on to. That's exactly right. So, and God must desire your healing. Ah, uh, yes. Mm. Yeah, David, we can have a good conversation on that. When you reach out to God, yes, he is. Yes, he is. That I love that. Thanks, David. Um, when you reach out to God and you're ready for healing, the healing takes place. He doesn't actually make the decision he assists you and he will bring the healing through. Absolutely magic. Thank you, Sarah. Appreciate that. Um, so where was I? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Lady with the uh, the ankle. Oh, I don't get a whole lot of choice on that, Kim. You know what? I was going to retire this year. Oh, hello. <laughs> apparently that's, apparently my telegram to heaven didn't quite get there. You know, and I sent through and said, um, I'm done. I'm, I'm going to retire. <laughs> uh, mm, didn't happen. Uh, that's right, Angela. But even then, the student can think they're ready and they'll make hard work of it. It's amazing. Thanks very much for letting me know that this is making sense. So this lady um, with the stingray in her ankle, several serious surgeries with metal plates and all sorts of crap. Hello, Colette. Um, nothing getting better. So after having met her and connected with her, I asked her one day, would she let me do some healing for her? And I'll find the problem. 
But if oh, I go to the physio, I do this, I do that, and I went, yeah, well, whatever, you can stay with that, but would you let me have a look? So she said yes. So we did, um, we did some work together, and on her second session with me, she cried and cried. She couldn't believe it. She said that she had not been able to get anyone to have her feel her foot that way. And here's the secret. Like we all do, when a part of us is paining, when a part of us is in deep sorrow, when a part of us keeps bringing pain to us, we disassociate and we disown it. So she had no connection with her foot. So in one of the, um, in the, the second session that I had with her, <laughs> apparently Kim, um, I did a particular meditation and energy work. And I was here, I'm talking to her on the phone uh, in South Australia, took her through this energy work and particular exercises to do and then got her to stand up and she said initially, you know, I can't stand up, I'm not allowed to stand. And I said, you trust me, trust me and all whom I work with, stand up without your crutches, stand up. So, no Jen, Joy O'Neill, I'm in Perth, Western Australia. So, um, she stood up and she cried and she cried. And she said that for four years, she had ne not felt her foot like that. And for four years, she'd not been able to stand on it. You see, she had so, so disassociated herself with that foot. It didn't exist as far as she was concerned. What she was relying on was the pins and screws and plates to make it better. And that wasn't going to happen. It wasn't going to happen at all. So she um, was a whole different lady after that. She just couldn't believe it and said nothing else had worked like that. Let me have a look, see. Mm, car accident. Mm, car accident. I do love that word accident. No such thing. Um, like swimming is good, love and light. Yes, Shelley, lots of things are good, but do we really want to be well? So where's my lady that has had gut issues for 13 years? Are you fed up with that? Have you had enough yet? Um, yeah, there you go, Tracy. That's exactly right. Beautiful. Very good energy healer. A real one knows what they're doing. Um, so, do, 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 you know, I've popped up once for some reason today. Well, that's lovely, Diane. I don't know why. You're welcome. It helps you to know that there is so much more to you. There is so much more to your life. And you have all the power you need to heal through anything. Not only through your own inner wisdom, but through the light of God. Now, if you've been with me a number of times, you will know that I do not talk to the universe. I commune only with God and the angels of God. Maria Christina Rocker. I love you people come in with these big names. Wish I could find my final healing in my own body for weight gain. Wish you could find your final healing in your own body well Maria, you line right up with the story I was just sharing. You need to take a really good look at why you are not associating with your body, what it is about yourself that you are in such disharmony, what it is about yourself that you really can't relate to. And therein you will find the magical healing in your own body. What is it that you refuse about yourself that prevents you from gaining weight? Lots of things to look at there, isn't it? So, Alicia McGuinness, let's see lower back, right then. Um, there's a lot of pressure in your, oh God, here we go. Um, a lot of pressure in your lower back and it is actually coming through from your organs so a lot of the pain that you get in your lower back 
is because of pressure associated around a lot of fluff as I see it at the back of your uterus and it has gone up and around um, into the lower back area so this is like looking at your uterus and seeing it with lots and lots and lots and lots of thick padded cotton wool around it it would be considered to be like endometriosis PCOS that sort of thing um, and this is actually putting pressure through your back you have also got uh, Alicia McGuinness you've also got um, a swollen right kidney and this kidney is very susceptible to heat it's very susceptible to the things that you drink um, and it doesn't manage with uh, having a lot of pressure so when you're sitting or when you're laying down that kidney actually needs you to be off it so you need to have some really good support behind you um, to be able to support that kidney All right um, Karen McAllister, I've had enough, that is. Had enough of? Are you the lady with the uh, 13 years of gut problems? Celiac, thyroid and allergies all your life. Madeline Tamer, you're just a dream come true for me. Um, celiac issues is so easy to fix. So easy. Um, but you have to be very prepared to forego... Um, things and do a full gut restore program to be able to restore the celiac restore your small intestine so that your gut can digest things properly so can you hear what i'm saying to here madeline turner what is it about life that you are not able to digest what is it in your life that you refuse to digest and you're very stubborn by the way um, the thyroid is very much about your your sense of right of speaking to be heard, right of being um, able to be seen and and love. You know, wanting to appreciate, feeling appreciated. So this is the thyroid and things getting stuck in your throat like a fish bone. So Madeline Turner, what is it that you choke on in life? and that you also refuse to digest because you're very stubborn. Um, panic attacks, Angela, not living in the present moment, but I will say to you that there is a trigger for this that's come into your life um, around the age of 23. Angela um, McCrohan, sorry if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. So looking at um, your life, a very big sudden shock uh, to you in your life when you were 23 and that's what began your disassociation with you not being able to stay present panic attacks are because you're there's fear but what is that fear about and it's of things happening out of your control just like what happened when you were 44 um mm. Narelle I like that too they love this love this been living with autoimmune issues for years i've tried numerous spiritual things as well as healing not quite sure what's causing it narelle as i was saying when you're going to have healing you really really must be ready to heal you really must be ready to address the things that have created that um, discord that disturbance autoimmune issues um, come down to a gut that is not working properly it is also about you feeling like you just can't take on all of what life is about it's like it's just too much it's too heavy for me to manage I'm not sure what the uh, numerous spiritual things are that you're talking to uh, are talking about but uh, nothing will work until you get to the root of it and until you're really ready to heal and that's a true story for everybody you can go you can go and sit with a shaman up on top of a rock in the middle of the Himalayas but you know if you're there for the wrong reasons if you're there um, if you're just there because you think it's a cool thing to do you're not going to heal you can do all sorts of things Autoimmune disease, yes, it's horrible, but it's all created. Um, myself, you tell me if I need to do any more work on myself. Cat Gray, um, yes, love, you've got tidying up to do. You know, 
You know, when we clean our house and we leave the dusting till last, it's like you. So you've got to dust away the crap. You've got to now polish yourself up. So polish up the things that you've been doing. Close and seal everything, cat grey. Um, Angela Phillips, for goodness sake, woman, get on to this stuff and get yourself sorted out. Gut issues driving me crazy. Well, what is it around you, male person, driving you crazy? You've also run out of patience with yourself, Angela Phillips. So you're not being very um, kind, compassionate to yourself. And you're getting very irritated with your body. But what is it that you're really irritated about? What's going on here? Let me see. Um, nerve pain, I was putting on weight. I want to go natural tablet. Um, natural herbs are a better way to go. Shelley Brewster. Um, nerve pain. What's getting on your nerves? What's really annoying you? Uh, and also your nerves are very frayed and it's not just one. So Shelley Brewster, all of your uh, nerve endings are really exhausted. They're fed up which is you, fed up, can't sort of get things to be in life the way that you want them to be and you've had enough. You're welcome, Alicia, Madeline, um, well, no, you're saying thanks to someone else. Um, if I switch my thinking, my body will heal. Or I suppose, ah, I just love that, Wendy, love that, thank you. I always thought I was a positive thinker. That is one of the things that the lady I went to see in hospital on Saturday to help her pass. That's one of the things that she's always thought was a very big positive for her, that she's a positive thinker. Well, there's a difference between being a positive thinker and really addressing the things that have gone pear-shaped in your life, that have left you with discord, that have left you with unanswered, buried emotions. Right, So when you do positive thinking, that's one thing and that's on one level. But when you've got stuff going on in the body and when there is disturbance in the energy fields, you must also be able to go to what that really is and release it. Be able to make peace with it, forgiveness, love, release it. So if you switch your thinking, will my body heal? It's more about finding what is the issue that you're holding on to. So as you've heard me say to these other ladies that um, their names have just come out of nowhere and spirit want to talk to them, is it's very much about particular emotions being, being stuck in the body, like getting on their own nerves, not able to digest life, getting pissed off, getting fed up with their body. So you really need to have a look at what you're really thinking you know, we can be a positive thinker, but are we really saying, I am fed up, I am sick and tired of my body feeling like this all the time, I'm sick and tired of my body not putting any weight on. Positive thinking, crap thinking. Doesn't work, doesn't work, right? Oh dear. Um, well, our headaches are all very much aligned to when we aren't being free, you're um, oppressive. So when you aren't being free to be your own self, when you're not in your own truth, you're not living your purpose, and you're not being clear about who you are. So you're trying to be one person to suit someone else or suit the work environment, do who you think you're meant to be, when in fact your soul's going, no, 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 that's not me. And it causes a big collision here. And of course, headaches all around the crown chakra and the third eye, all about your connection to the divine, your connection to be able to see for yourself using the wisdom, the insight of the third eye. So when you're getting headaches around here, you must ask yourself, what is it that I am blocking? What is it I'm not willing to receive? What is it that I don't want to be in connection with my higher self about? Why are you avoiding it? That's what headaches are about, okay? Um, she can... Madeline Taman, Jen Joy O'Neill, she can if she would like to come and spend some time with me. Um, right, so I'm just going to remind you all. Um, I like this one, Keish is, um, oh, Quinn's Rocks, hello Maria, lovely. Uh, I'm not far away from you. Well, it feels like forever just now, the things, but yeah, I'm in uh, Wanneroo, 
Maria. So reasons for a shoulder that dislocates and is weak, that's your heart. Any uh, issues around the shoulder, the shoulder joint, lack of movement, frozen shoulders, painful shoulder restriction, it's actually the heart. People come to see me about their shoulder that the doctor, the physio hasn't been able to fix. And I say, well, let's look at your heart. And they go, no, I'm here for my shoulder. <laughs> yes, we're going to look at your heart and find out what's going on. You're welcome, Angela. Um, so when you want to know what's happening with a shoulder, you need to find out what it is that you have transferred from your heart, that your heart's been overburdened with and also what you don't want to look at in your heart. That's what's been parked over on your shoulder. There is the other uh, thing about, you know, the weight of the world on your shoulders. That's not the case with you. Mm. Um, Lydia, it's no wonder that, you're, uh, <clears throat> that your knee has been worse than before your surgery. You actually get um, quite considerable size pools of um, fluid in your knee and behind your knee. I get a lot of pain and discomfort behind your knees. Um, both knees actually, and this is fluid build up. When they did the surgery, um, I'm going to say to you that it was done a little bit carelessly, so things weren't really put in place the way that they're meant to be um, and left aligned the way that they're meant to be. You will be able to go up and down stairs without pain. Ah, uh, yes, Chazza, that's the one I was looking for fibromyalgia, absolutely. Fibromyalgia, why are your nerves in such a disarray that they are so inflamed? Fibromyalgia can be healed just like anything else. Um, do, 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 joint pain, Sharon White. Um, when we have joint pain and when we're finding ourselves in a situation where we can't move forward, so our joints seize up, and we can't have that freedom of extension. Our joints allow us to be able to extend ourselves. So when we have joint pain and we get inflammation in there and we create restriction and hold ourselves back, there is a plethora of emotions that go with that. Anger is one of the main things, anger towards self. So a decision that you made five years ago around someone else and investing everything into that relationship, into that situation, and it didn't work out. Angry with yourself for not seeing it, for not acting on it earlier, persisting when you, you kept feeling like, I should leave this, I should leave this. So when we've got a lot of joint pain and resistance, we're resisting ourselves and we haven't listened to the guidance from our higher self, from our soul and we bury things like anger and um, resentment, even bitterness can hide in our joints. But when it is um, the big joints, like our hip joint and our elbow that allow us to reach for things, we've got to be asking what it is that we're holding ourselves back from. Why do we feel that we can't reach for things that we want in our life? So you've got to do some really deep work on where you're at with feeling that you deserve what it is that you want to bring into your life. Uh, Sarah Bellamy, PCOS is all very much about um, not feeling enough when it comes to, to accepting and being able to freely give nurture. So when you have PCOS, endometriosis, period pain is an issue, a lot of it comes down to our sense of security in feeling safe to accept nurture to feeling deserved of receiving nurture and then also giving nurture right so you see to those things and you can heal pcos very easily lee what you laughing at uh yeah wendy you do love oh and bursitis goodness me girl yeah you got some work to do sort that sort that heart out um uh, Melanie, hello, just came in to see us. Thank you very much. Best way to heal autoimmune type issues is the first thing, first and foremost from a physical point of view, and this is the other thing, people, you must help the body heal by actually attending to things that are going to help it be uh, less toxic, less inflamed, even when it's too alkaline, it's too acidic. 
you must take action that is going to actually help the physical body. You see, with the way I work, I am a true holistic practitioner. I use my acquired knowledge through being a nurse, through all my various um, diplomas, certificates and things in wellness, in health, and then my natural ability to see into you. So I can cheat and find what the issue is and what the body needs. But you need to take the steps to help the body repair itself. So when we have autoimmune type issues, gut issues, leaky gut, celiac, IBS, you need to clean the shit out of your system. You need to bring those organs back into being in really optimal health. And you do that through doing gut health programs. Do I run them? Yes, I do. Why? Because that's where the gut problems and where disturbance in the body begins and ends. When the gut is really well, when the organs are, are working optimally, you can heal so quickly. And then you work on the um, emotional side of things. You're welcome, Shelley. <laughs> yes, Wendy. Me too sometimes. I'm actually hoping to be over in uh, Busy Town or no, it might be on the Sunshine Coast. It's not too far from Busy Hay for uh, the Conscious Life events. Hope to be holding a workshop and um, doing healing there. Uh, and that's in April. But you know, who knows with the way that things are going. Thanks, Keish. Um, compassionate, kind to oneself and be a lot more loving. Treat oneself how you would treat someone else. You're in South Australia. There are no um, there are no obstacles. There are no restrictions to being able to receive healing to be able to have sessions with me. Um, don't you don't pancreas body aches. Oh, nasty Victoria. Um, anything with the liver is going to cause all sorts of other issues in the body. The liver is such an important organ and really needs to be taken care of when there's fatty liver and diverticulitis and cysts on the pancreas. Man, you're really storing up a whole lot of anger. We need, need to get the shit off your liver, as the old saying says. Um, yeah, absolutely, Hannah. Absolutely. You're welcome, Sharon. Uh, yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> Hello, Natasha. Shungite water by the gallons, girl. You'll be um, you'll be overloading your lymph system, overloading the kidneys. I hope you're um, really drinking it by way of letting it go through the sides of your mouth. You know, um, I've been to lots of seminars. I've heard lots of people talk on gut health and on exercise and all sorts of things. And the stupidest, worst advice I've ever heard is the first thing you do when you wake up is squats and have a glass of water and if you wake up through the night have a glass of water that is the worst advice you give anyone the same as doing squats i'm a qualified master personal trainer check holistic trainer in fitness in um, strength and conditioning you do not just get up and go straight into squats and you certainly don't she says do them when you're on the toilet you know up down or when you've been to the toilet no no you don't and when it comes to drinking a glass of water as soon as you wake up, oh my God, all you've done is swallowed all the muck that the liver and the bowel have been trying to get rid of all night. The first thing you should do in the morning is rinse your mouth. Rinse your mouth. And if you're into tongue scraping, please think twice. Please be very careful with tongue scraping. It's a good thing as long as you know how to do it properly and you don't overdo it. You have got millions of beautiful taste buds on your tongue. And if you don't know what it is that you're scraping off, you could very well be damaging those taste buds. So, you know, when you go around looking at programs or you hear someone talk like this lady the other day, said, oh, wow, I heard this lady and she said, you know, do squats as soon as you get up and have this glass of water in the middle of the night, having already heard that person, I knew what she was talking about. 
You just don't do it. Don't do it. Clear. Hello, Kay. Hamilton, good to see you. Um, yes, Maria, you certainly can. My website and my links are in the information for this um, session. So the website is healwithgwenda.com. You can also reach out to me via my Facebook page. Um, I actually have a page with my classes, okay. Um, Hannah, can you email me and I will see what I can do to help you there with that. So, good people, we've come to that time of the night. Whew, didn't we have a whirlwind time this evening? Um, trying to see you. Wendy Harvey, I would love to see you. Now, I'm going to say to you here, people, that your health is your, the, the wealth of your life is your health. And your health is your wealth. Without your health, money can do no good for you. You know, and without your health, you can't, you can't have money. So you might have lots of money, but if your health's no good, what good is your money to you? And without your wealth, you, um, you obviously can't have your health either. It's kind of a, you know, it's like that kind of thing, isn't it? So if you're looking at coming to do some work with me, I am not a bottom of the rung um, cost. You will have to invest, right? I'm just going to put that straight out there too. When it comes to doing a one-on-one -on -one healing session, I'm very reasonable compared compared around the place so please reach out if you would like to really know about your healing and get yourself on track um, and have the insights into be able to heal in what you're doing and you're welcome Sonny thanks for being here thank you all for being here it's been fabulous thank you Shazar Roland um, and please do connect you've got the links are here so it's um, heal with Gwenda that you're looking for healwithgwenda.com, Facebook page Heal With Gwenda. The spiritual Facebook page is just Gwenda Smith. And apparently there's a few more of them in the world. Well, that's just wrong, isn't it? So you will know when you see my face that it's me. Um, but the links are there. Hi, Antoinette. I'm very good. And darling, I'm just winding up because we've been on and there will be someone else dying to come in. So um, hi, Cassidy. Thank you all very much for being here. It's been fabulous and I will look forward to seeing you again next week. Take good care between now and then. Be kind, be loving, be compassionate. Bye now.